Bring to why not? <laughs> uh, we're starting uh, the morning by discussing today's top news with Giles Brandes and Tim Campbell. Lovely to see you both. Well, we're excited to see you. You are in hot form today. Oh, well, they look hot. good, don't they? They look yeah, good. They look good. Thanks, Tim. Oh, we, nice we, we were happy to be back, aren't we? Yeah. Um, this one is all about remembering the Queen. Uh, mm. Today marks one year since the death of Her Majesty the Queen. His Majesty the King has remembered his late mother uh, in a, a devoted service. And, and basically, it was... A lovely, lovely um, speech that he said. Let's take a look. In marking the first anniversary of Her Late Majesty's death and my accession, we recall with great affection her long life, devoted service, and all she meant to so many of us. I am deeply grateful, too, for the love and support that has been shown to my wife and myself during this year, as we do our utmost to be of service to you all. Now, the King is spending the day privately at Balmoral um, and also the Prince and Princess of Wales are expected to attend a special service at St David's Cathedral in West oh, nice. Wales, apparently. Mm. It's nice to reflect, though, isn't it? I think you may see the King and Queen Camilla come out of Balmoral to go to church to remember their, his mother. Uh, the Queen, the late Queen Elizabeth II, she always marked her accession by remembering her father. Mm. Oh. She used to be at Sandringham, have a quiet day, or sometimes she would visit a cancer clinic of some kind because her father died of cancer. And I think the king will just want to have a, a quiet day. Is that uh, protocol, Charles? I mean, because obviously it's been so long since this has happened Well, before. in a sense, these people, you make up the rules as you go along. Right. Mm. And the late, late queen, Elizabeth II, was our longest reigning monarch. 17 years uh, ago. Look, I'm wearing my... I was pleased to be able to get it out of the cupboard. Corgi. <laughs> my, my cor <laughs> she loved her corgis. Because the thing to remember about the late queen, uh, driven by duty, that was everything to her, sustained by faith, her religious faith was very important, but kept, ha kept happy for her 96 years by her love of her dogs yeah. and her horses. horses. They were everything yeah. to her. But the more I think about her, and I, I've been writing a book about her, the more I think about her, she was remarkable. She was a remarkable human being because she was a shy person and yet she lived this public life and she really did give it over to service. Mm. That's what she... Her last public statement for her Platinum Jubilee only a year ago, all that with Paddington Bear, it was only a year ago... I can't believe it. ..she signed it off, your servant, and that's how she saw herself. Mm. Uh, and, indeed, when you curtsied just a moment ago to uh, Alison, quite right, a very nice curtsy, <laughs> it reminded me of a story I was told by an Aquarii, one of the people who looked after the Queen, when Mrs Thatcher first became Prime Minister. Remember Mrs Thatcher? Yeah. Before your time. No, 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 you're, you're very kind. You're very... Our, our first woman Prime Minister. She had to go to Buckingham Palace. She was introduced to the Queen, and uh, they weren't sure. The Aquarius said, you, you can curtsy if you want to, it's not compulsory. She said, oh, I'm going to curtsy. Mrs Thatcher did a very low curtsy right to the ground and then couldn't get up and glanced at the Aquarius, who came beetling over to try and hoist Mrs Thatcher up. Oh, <laughs> and he couldn't get her up. So Elizabeth II, from the other side, came round, and the Aquarius and the Queen... That's true story. True story. That's true story. Told to me by the Aquarii. That's extraordinary. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Well, it's, it's there's no nice... footage of that. There is no footage of that. Time. You know, you just have to hear it. believe it when I tell it to you. We do believe it. It's really interesting that, as a uh, self-professed mummy's boy, mm -hmm. it's great to see a son paying homage to their yeah. mother. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of people, particularly as we've just come out of a pandemic, who lost parents at that time. So lots of people can connect with that loss that you have, but also the memories, the positive yeah. memories, and you talk about service, but the positive memories you have around your mother, and it's that link you never really, really lose, yeah. isn't no, it? Definitely. I mean, you're the younger generation. How do you think the new king has done? Tim, you're going thought... to tell us you're, like, 62 in a minute, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's your trick. That's not you. I, I wish I was. Maybe this one is. I wish, I wish. I wish. No, I think, I think the, the new the king has, has, has big boots to fill, as it were, yeah. right? So I think it's been really difficult for him to try to marry the difficulties in the family with the difficulties of the country and his role, his new role, in the shadow of his mother. And I think he's doing a reasonable job. Yeah. He's really open to having really broad conversations, particularly around the environment, around inclusivity mm -hmm. in his country and other yeah. things. And there's a big, big duty of service that he has to lead and follow. And I think for us as a country, we really need to think about what is the type of country that we want. And he now, as one of the ambassadors with our political system, is trying to lead that. Yeah, very good. Couldn't have put it better. It leads yeah. on to the, the Well Child Awards yeah. that Prince Harry attended, the patron. He was in attendance last night. Um, shall we have a look at a little bit of his speech? Let's take a look. As you know, I was unable to attend the awards last year as my grandmother passed away. As you also probably know, she would have been the first person to insist 
that I still come to be with you all instead of going to her. <clears throat> and that's precisely why I know exactly one year on that she is looking down on all of us tonight, happy we're together, continuing to spotlight such an incredible community. It's nice lovely speech. that he also paid tribute to the late, his late grandmother as well. Isn't well, it? he loved her. And if ever you saw any footage of them together, they were very larky together. I mean, you know, she enjoyed mm. his company and he was great fun with her. And it's lovely that he's able to pay tribute. I think one of the reasons it's worked well for the King is that the day after the Queen died, he made his statement and he said in that, you know, he made, the, made it clear we're going to have a new Prince and Princess of Wales and he sent his love to mm. uh, Harry and Meghan starting their new life overseas. And, you know, it's, it's evolving. It's evolving, uh, which is good, but great yeah. that he's here. I think he's then going on to his Invictus Games. Uh, let's talk about Prince William um, and Gaza. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, the Where did that combination come from, right? So, so this is yesterday. Uh, Prince William uh, got a kiss from Gaza during a royal visit to a friend of mine. Well, it's just yeah. a lovely story. I mean, the, the Pratt Foundation, which does incredible work, huge amount, uh, trying to get homeless people back into work, and obviously that's one of his big passion projects. Mm. So he went down and found a familiar face in the crowd. Take a look. Can I say that's the way to do it? Should we send that over to the man in Spain, the man who runs the football association? Oh, God. <laughs> say, this is the way to do it. A gentle peck on the cheek is quite acceptable, even if you are the prince. All of we Paris. need. Right. We love Gaza. We love William, don't we? Yeah. yeah. I just, love, I just love the fact that he was actually quite shocked to see Gaza. Yeah, well, I mean, I'd be shocked to see Gaza in, in a prayer. Oh, my man. It's really interesting because you had Jerry Halliwell and the Spice Girls who uh, broke that protocol of kissing yeah. royals, and now you've got Gaza doing it. So maybe this is the royal family. But you being know what, open. though? You're saying how it needs to, It has to evolve like that. It has to. Like the pro, those kind of protocols just have to be relaxed. Otherwise. Otherwise, otherwise... And they are, they are relaxed. Right. It evolves as the time exactly, goes yeah. by. I mean, in the early days of the Queen, and there was always an invisible moat around the Queen anyway, yes. but when she was young, everybody curtsied. You know, she walked down the road and everyone curtsied. Yeah. At the end of her life, she didn't expect it any longer. Yeah. I think one of the things that she didn't like about the modern world was in the old days when she appeared, people would be waving or saying hello or even clapping and cheering. Mm. She would get out of the train now silence because they're all with their phones. taking pictures. Taking pictures. Yeah. What do you think about that, everyone living their lives through the phone? Do well, you not think we should just watch it oh, God, yeah. and see what happens? Yes. But it's still nice to have souvenirs. You yeah. know, it is quite nice to have. I get, like, I get the idea. Take in one picture, but then put it away and experience. Yeah, I, know. I guess so. We, we were sounding very old, you know this, don't you? Do we? We were sounding very old. Do we, what, what should we be saying? Well, no, but I think you've got to be able to move with the times. And this yeah, social media true. is great about collecting memories. And as we get older, some of those, particularly those with dementia, they find actually memories and pictures incredibly helpful about bringing back those moments. It the, can I say it's absolutely right? I mean, uh, working with people with dementia, for example, mm. take them back to their childhood yeah. and the poems, the nursery rhymes yep. they yeah. knew then, and perform them with them, and they come to life again. Yeah, yeah. And showing these Indeed. old pictures. Music. Yep. Yeah. Music is the key. Listen, you two at the beginning. Yeah. Okay, so I can see this being made into a bit of a film, you know. The escaped prisoner is still on the loose. No confirmed sightings. Uh, prisoner Daniel Khalif, he escaped prison underneath a truck. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Yesterday, police accidentally detained a look-alike at an... Oh, sorry, oh, I shouldn't be laughing. I know, but it, uh, it's comic because train it's station so... With the arrest caught on camera by a member of the right. public. Have we got that? I want to see that. I want to see that. I'm going to yeah, go and no. straight online afterwards. Uh, 21-year-old <laughs> Daniel Khalif is accused of trying to spy for an enemy state understood to be Iran and plotting a fake bomb hoax. Huge questions, though, story, being story, raised yeah. as to why a terror suspect was not, you know, detained in, in the high Category security. Category A. Yeah. We yeah. have to guard, don't we, Alison, against glamorising it. You're saying yeah. I'm yeah. No, I know. I'm so sorry. And then sorry. it becomes when... a mixture of a carry-on film yeah. and Day of the Jackal, <laughs> the way you're telling it. Um, it's a serious story, isn't it? It is a serious story, but, but I think the... The difficulty I have is that Damien Hines, the, the prison minister, he should be coming out about talking about underfunding within the police, the pr no, the prison service. How are we going to get more actual guards within those? Cities? And we've got Victorian prisons which are literally crumbling, which aren't able to house individuals. And I think this scenario really highlights that we need to do much more from this government about empowering those people who we give the right to look after people who are dangerous suspects in this moment and other individuals. He is a suspect, and I think the mistake seems to have been that he was put into a Category B prison, yeah. where the security is lighter than in a Category A prison, mm -hmm. when this is unlikely to have happened. 
but obviously he's up for the possibility of serious offences. Yeah. And it's pretty dramatic. I live in West London last night and we had these helicopters through yeah. the night yeah. going over us. You know, we wondered what it was. Did you have a look in your shed? Uh, no. <laughs> My wife nudged me and said, they got you at last, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hopefully the you made it in today. <laughs> the incidents, led to, like you said, Tim, uh, caused by the Chief Inspector of Prisons, Charlie Taylor, mm. for the closure of Wandsworth and further calls to reform UK's prisons to make... I don't, I don't think we can close the prison, cos where are we going to put right. these people, right? We need to put the money into building them back up with proper concrete, not the rack stuff yeah. that's going everywhere, yeah. and making sure that we have proper paying... Uh, paid individuals are protecting us, and there's not enough people because how can somebody hold onto the bottom of a truck and just get out sure of prison? Thing. It's ridiculous. I mean, that's just a quick swoop with one of those mirrors, isn't it? You well, just go exactly. On there. Why is that not yeah. being done yeah. with vehicles going out of the mm. prison? It's weird. I found it very interesting. Previous uh, incumbents of the prison, like Boris Becker and other, have been there. Did you know that? No. I didn't know that. Mm, indeed. Um, more from this little dream team. <laughs> wow. Thanks very much for joining this little pairing. Still to come today, if you're up in Yorkshire, keep your eyes peeled. You might spot a Hollywood a list Hugh Jackman is out and about discussing that. And more of today's Stop Stories next. And we'll be joined by the child superstars who charm Prince Harry. See you in a few minutes. <laughs>